Hey there everyone, my name is Hitesh and welcome to the YouTube channel and this is another video in the series in the continuation of CCP exam, the Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. In this video, we are going to just simply see how to do AWS CLI configuration. AWS CLI is the command line interface which you can use to do a lot of things programmatically or via the command line in the AWS account. This is not really a long topic. We'll not be lingering around. We'll be just focusing on what are, how the things are being done. Good practices, bad practices, what to avoid and what can be useful for the exam perspective and a regular life as well. Uh, we're keeping a short uh, YouTube comment target as well. So help me to actually achieve that. Just simple, 100 comments, that's it. This is for my personal motivation. Let me go ahead and walk you through with that. So first of all, let me share the screen. This is where our AWS uh, simple account is. And as you can notice, I'm using my sub account, not the root account, Hitesh YT. I just created that for fun uh, to actually teach this. And all you have to do first thing is just look for this. Go ahead and search for AWS Windows CLI. Probably you are on Windows or just search for Mac CLI. All these are going to land you up in the very first this page. And this actually is the single page which gives you the installer for the Linux, Mac and Windows. If you are Windows, just go ahead and download this. This is a .msi installer, Microsoft installer. Next, next, I agree, click OK. That's that's the whole thing. And after that, you'll be able to actually run all these commands like AWS dash dash version. And similar goes for the Mac. On I'm on the Mac, so I just want to go ahead and work with this. So if you want to have a GUI installer or you want to have a command line installer, these are the commands you have to run. And after that, you can just simply run AWS dash dash version. The commands are exactly same for both Mac and the Windows and all these guys. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, by the way, let me just check the preference. It should be dark. Okay, much better for you now. <laughs> All right. So the first step that you have to do is open up your terminal or command line if you're on a Mac or Windows, depends. And what we're going to do is simply run the command uh, AWS. If you run the command AWS and it gives you something like this, that, hey, you don't know the usage of the command, that's exactly what we want. This is exactly what we want. Now, what you can do is you can run simply a command AWS and first time you have to do is configure. Uh, just like this, it will ask you to actually enter the command line uh, key and password. Now, I don't have any, so I'll just go into IAM to actually create a dummy user which can have these kinds of access. So I'll just go ahead and create a new user and I'll just simply say create user and I'm going to call this one as a developer. That's really basic. I don't want to give them the access of AWS Management Console, so I'll just uh, keep that as it is. I have my groups which have the admin access. I have already walked through in the previous videos. If you haven't watched that, go watch that. I would like to add this user into the admin group so that it has the administration access, although really bad idea. It should have the developer access, but okay, it's okay. And then we can simply go ahead and by the way, here is the uh, set permission boundaries, like what it can do and what it can cannot control. I'll not worry about that. Let's click on the next and looks okay. And let's go ahead and create a user. Now this developer is the new user that we have and it will take a couple of seconds to have the MFA's information. Right now we don't need to worry, just click on that. And now what you can do is you can actually create the access key just directly from here. So let's go ahead and create an access key. When you select for command line interface, by the way, you can select any one of them. It just results the same. It will give you a small warning. I know this warning, I'm okay with that. I know what I'm doing. Click on the next, and then probably you can give the direct access tag values and all of that. I'll just go ahead and directly click on that. This is your access key and this is your secret. This is really, really powerful. Let's go ahead and copy this. Let's go back onto the terminal. Once you hit the AWS configure option, you can just hit enter. It will ask you that, hey, what is your access key ID? I already have one of the access key ID in my account. That's why it's giving me these square brackets. It will not give it to you. I'll just go ahead and hit enter after pasting this. And then it's asking me the secret access key. So I'll just go ahead and copy this secret access key. And I'll go back and I'll paste this. And I'll hit enter. It will ask me the default region. I'm happy with the US East one. By the way, you can just see in the drop down all these US East one. Uh, maybe you want to go for AP South one, whatever you're going for. I'll just be happy with this one. So I'll hit enter. This is my default region name. A default format is JSON, which is good. You really want JSON in this case. Hit enter and that's it. Now you have configured this. The idea behind that is now you can run commands like AWS S3 
ls it will give you and list all the s3 buckets of the aws as you can see we have couple of buckets already in my account yours probably might be empty uh, but the whole idea is now you can run aws command and your command line is able to talk to uh, all of this directly now couple of things if you're a developer you know what you're doing that's great but here are a couple of gotchas that you have to see uh, otherwise it will be really a nightmare for you uh, for example, you have already seen my access key and the IDs up here. So anybody can actually access into this account and can misuse this, can spin up machines, can do so many things which can rack up the bill. So it's not a good idea. Although AWS doesn't recommend this, that unless you really know you are a developer, you really know that I need these keys and something, uh, don't just store them, use AWS. There are better options of accessing EC2 instance and all these things. Uh, one more thing, once you do go into, once you hit the CD command and hit enter, uh, there is a hidden folder in this account. Uh, in all the Linux and Mac, you need to find the location for Windows. Nobody will ask you in the exam, but this is some practical advice. Uh, once you see .aws, you'll see that in the ls, you can see config and the credential. Whatever the information you have passed just now is actually being splitted up into two different files. And I can just see them in uh, cat config. So this is the default region and the JSON output. And uh, I can also do a cat for credentials. As you can see, the credentials are in the clear text format. Not a good idea. Somebody can misuse whoever gets the access of your machine. Also, this reminds, uh, this is again a reminder that anybody uh, who is working with the EC2 machines, never, never in any case, I repeat, never go into any EC2 instance and configure these credentials in the EC2 machines. Uh, there are so many nightmares. There are so many articles regarding the same that that was done accidentally or unintentionally and it racked up the bill. Also in the AWS exams, it is being asked that you should never ever do this. Uh, by the way, you can actually go ahead and uh, work with this. Uh, let me just go ahead. These are my access keys. I can take actions on these access keys. I can deactivate them. So let's go ahead and deactivate them. So this is the access key being deactivated. And now I can go ahead and delete this. Uh, I have to enter this one, so I'll just copy this. This is a really long one. Don't want to type that in any case, and I'll just delete this. So now whatever you have seen as the access key, now it's gone. If I go back, although this is my access key, I cannot go ahead and say AWS list the all S3 buckets, so I can go ahead and do this. Now it will give me the error that, hey, an error occurred. Uh, let me just show you again. Uh, hey, there is an error, and I cannot actually access. These are invalid keys. Once the keys are invalid, they are not repeatable. You cannot make them activate. You have to create the new ones. So this developer, although is an account, but it's not really a part of access key ac accessible. Uh, that's it. That's pretty much it, uh, believe it or not. Uh, this is all you have to uh, know about the commands, configure, and uh, where the files are actually there, and good practices and bad practices. That's it. Told you it's really simple to have the AWS CLI configuration. No need to worry, no need to uh, be panicked about it. That's it for this video. Don't forget my uh, comment target. I hope you'll help me to achieve in that. And that's it. Let's catch up in the next video.